tiplawneducation.com here with our 14 tips for cutting hair better. This is tip number 12. So thank you for hanging in there. It's been a while. Um, we're gonna work on weight control. And I, when you talk about weight in a haircut, I'm not so much talking about if it's gonna be heavy or weak in the haircut. What I'm talking about is how we're passing the weight along in the haircut. So we're gonna look at this more horizontally here. Um, I'm gonna use a comb with wider teeth. Normally, with a wet cut, I like the 334 comb from, uh, this is our Mizutani comb. Um, I like the 334 because of the tightness and the tension um, and it, how tiny it is because it allows me to work in tight spots. When I worked with dry cutting, this is a 332 comb. I like a comb with wider teeth. So any comb that you have that has the wider teeth, that's what you're really looking for. So now I've cut this bob just in a, a blunt line. And what I want to do is just work through that and show you guys how shifting weight can really change your cut. All right guys, so we're gonna focus on how the weight moves on the head. And, and what, like I said before, we're not gonna focus on how much elevation we're doing or how much weight we're removing from the initial, uh, the graduation or the layering. But what we're gonna focus on is the shape and how we're kind of pushing weight and where you want that weight to go. Because a lot of people just overdrag too far and then you're pushing too much weight in here and you just don't understand what happens. So I want to really go in here and show you guys the different ways to shift the weight. So we're going to take a vertical section out of this and basically the deal is here, I'm not, I'm doing this dry so that you guys can see the weight distribution, but normally I would not do this dry. This would be a, more in the wet cut. So we're gonna cut this vertically and I'm gonna bring everything just straight out from the head. So really just trying to keep the, everything consistent in the back, no over direction whatsoever. So I'll pull a little bit of that guide in, but not much. And we're gonna work our way across the head, over directing everything straight out. As we work through. Now, what you will notice is as this is working through, the head starts to curve away. So I'm gonna show you, we'll take this last section here. The head starts to curve away. So what I want you to see is in this line, can you see that line, Thad? Okay, so what you can see, what happened, we've, everything came out vertically straight out from the head. But what happens is, the head starts to curve around, and as the head curves around, there starts to be over direction. Even if you're not thinking that in your mind, it starts to over direct slightly. So what you can see within the weight is it travels across the head, pretty consistent, until that bend happens. And then as soon as that bend happens, you're slightly over directing more and more. So now you get that slight line because the hair gets a little bit longer because the head is further away and it just starts to dip the hair down. So you need to be cautious of these things as you're cutting hair because of the fact that if I were to follow this line and bring everything back, now as I start pulling hair further and further away from where it lives, it just gets heavier and heavier and longer and longer. So that's why when you cut an A-line bob, it just gets too heavy in the front. So you wanna follow that corner around slightly, still over directing slightly back, but just because you're worried about cutting out this behind the ear, don't be worried about that. Be, cut your line, follow your line, but follow around the head. And as long as you have your line cut previous, so you can see we cut the line first, then if you follow the head around, you're still gonna have that length, but you're not gonna have this heavy weight in here. So this, as it kind of works its way around, is gonna fall too heavy. So it just depends. Doesn't mean that this is wrong. All, it, all I'm saying is that be cautious of how you're pushing weight because right away you see this dip dive, all of that's gonna get heavier and heavier as it goes. So just make sure on the weight control. Now, that's as I was cutting it vertically. Now the reason we might wanna cut horizontally is because as I'm holding this straight out like this, this is actually, I'm holding that whole entire line in my hand. So it's, what do you wanna focus on? Do I wanna focus vertically and focus on how much weight I wanna remove this way? Or do I wanna focus on it horizontally and focus on how much weight I wanna remove this way? That's really the only difference in cutting horizontal and vertical. I like to keep it as comfortable as I can be. So whatever situation makes me the most comfortable, you know, on top of the head more, I like to work vertically. When I'm down below, I like to work horizontally. Just focus on those two aspects 
how you're holding it here and what line you're working here and the line that you're working here and how the head shape is moving away. All right guys, so I hope that tip helped you. It's really just, I can't stress enough the importance of weight control in a haircut and that's what this tip is all about. Just focus on what's going on, how you're holding the hair and where the head shape is going and you're gonna be good to go. We're gonna move on, we got step 13 and then 14, two more left to go. So I hope these are helping you guys. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, freesaloneducation.com and we will see you on the next video, thanks.